Hello and welcome to Ozscar Modeling. This is a video in our playlist of videos for tips and tricks. And this one is called Working with Photo Etch. And in this video, I'm going to go through all the tools and equipment you need to use Photo Etch, um, to glue, gluing it, um, bending, everything and anything I can think of to do with photo etch, um, particularly for beginners, because we're going to look at how to do how to use this photo etch if you have basically no tools at all, and we'll be looking at some of the stuff that's actually designed to be used with photo etch um, to make the job a bit easier and a bit more accurate. So if you're new to using photo etch, which I was only nine months ago. Um, nine months ago, I didn't know Photo Etch existed. Nine months ago, I built my first model. <laughs> so I figure if I can do this, anybody can do this. My third model, because I've been, well, actually I've been building ship models. So my third model was the US Kitty Hawk. And it came with an MK1 Designs markup kit of over 6,500 photo etch pieces on, I think there was about 12 sheets of photo etch, and I would have used most of it in the build. So it was quite a learning curve, um, but hey, you know, what they say, photo etch is your friend. <laughs> And some people struggle with it, some people love it. it, all depends on how much your kit has in it, or how much you want to add to it. Many kits, particularly well, my experiences with ships, um, they do come with a little bit of photo etch, but most of the time there's a lot of aftermarket sets for photo etch, and they're bought out by companies like Eddard, MK designs, um, a couple other companies, and Pontos, but these will bring out extra detail kits that you add to your model to enhance the detail. Some of these kits can be just small uh, individual turrets or uh, individual um, photo edge just for aircraft on aircraft carriers or, or different AA guns, or you can buy kits that include cranes certain sections of your kit build or the full kits and in most cases the full um, photo etch detail kits uh, cost more than the model itself quite substantially more <laughs> i think the photo etch kit for the kitty hawk was probably almost twice the cost of the 1350 trumpeter kit but the end result was definitely worthwhile. So anyway, we're going to look at, um, first we'll look at what photo etch is. So we have some photo etch here. And these are just some leftover ones I had from one of my kits. I think it was the actual, might have been the Kitty Hawk. Uh, yeah, I think it was. And so these were trumpeter. Um, photo etch which is quite a thick photo etch which I think is good I like the thick one because you're less likely to have accidents with it which we'll go into um, this yeah this is definitely the kitty hawk so this one has the one of the towers on the deck we've got all the railing uh, all the netting that goes around the outside of the aircraft carrier there and along the sides um, there's a few, there's a ladder in there. So photo etch is all enhanced detail that your normal kits either, well, they'll provide what they can in the way of plastic, but sometimes, a lot of times, plastic just can't 
get the effect. Like ladders and and walkways are not going to show the grills and the and the railings in the detail than what Photo Edge can. As you can see with this, uh, how detailed that is. So, using Photo Edge, um, there's a there's a couple of things now. Number one tip, there'll be quite a few tips in this video, and mind you, I don't have any, I don't have 20, 15, 20 years of experience of photo etch, let alone model building. I'm just going, giving you tips on what I've learned and what I've found just in the time I've been using photo etch uh, that I hope will help people out if um, they come across it or want to um, enhance their models. So, um, number one tip is your cutting mat. This here, don't work on photo etch on your cutting mat. A couple of reasons. Uh, one reason being that if you've got a cutting mat that you use all the time, it's not going to be a smooth surface. Um, and you need a smooth surface. Also, these cutting mats, as you know, you put a knife mark into these and they're soft. You need a hard surface for these um, sheets of photo etch. Now, what I do is I, get, I went down to the local tiles show, um, show center um, and I walked in there and I asked them, do you have a spare tile? And usually they'll just give you a free sample. And there it is. So just a plain flat white tile. And what that does is it gives you a nice hard surface that's easy to keep clean. And, and it's stable. It's not going to move around. This is a small one. You can get different sizes, but this is... This did the job and your photo etch right on there um, occasionally you might get uh, glue or you know stuff on here but the, the advantage of having a tile is all you need is a razor blade and you just simply go along and boom it's like brand new again and it literally the thousands of pieces of photo etch I've done and this is tile is as good as the day I bought it. So, photo etch. Let's have a look. Um, let's see. First of all, I'm going to have to have a look at one we need to bend. So, let's try this. Now, some sheets, uh, particularly uh, these ones from Trumpeter, and I'm, they come with the kits. I'm not sure. I think they're the only one that I know of. It actually come with plastic layers on here. So this here has a plastic layer. I don't know if you can see there, but see this plastic. So what you do is you can grab this plastic and peel it back. That protects protects the photo etch. Another good another tip. I won't keep count of tips, but another tip: wash your hands before you're handling photo etch. All right, now that's something I haven't done right now. I didn't think of it. And just straight away, just from then, just touching the photo, the bare photo etch under that plastic. And already, I don't know if you can see, there's a fingerprint there. See that? Yeah, you can just see that there. So to show you how easy it is to put a fingerprint, just like that. And you, now you got oil and grease and stuff on your hands amazing what happens how much you can get all over this um, wash your hands simple solves the problem straight away um, oils and stuff on your hands go straight onto this and it would affect it might and probably does affect you painting it afterwards if you've got grease on it or whatever's come off your skin so try and have clean hands so this sheet, this will come off, all the way off, like that. And then there's another layer underneath. 
Now, what you can do is if you need to take a piece of photo edge off, you can leave that plastic underneath. And what that will do is let you take off the piece of photo edge and it will stop it from flicking away, or at least prevent it from flicking off into the carpet monster and be gone forever or somewhere on your desk because some of this stuff can get much very, very small. This stuff is actually quite large uh, compared to what summer photo etch can be. So yeah, if you leave that plastic backing on and then you cut them off, like I'll show you shortly, that's that, that'll help keep them from flinging away. So, um, so let's talk about um, tools for cutting photo etch. So there are plenty of tools that you can buy that are specifically for cutting this and there's popular brand names. You know, you could Google search them to help to do this. But what I find is I use simply one of these box cutters. Now, I deliberately buy these thin ones. This one's called a Trojan. There's also a Stanley knife and a few other brands, um, which I like this one because the blades, it comes with about 15 different blades. Um, you just slide it up as you, as you need. It also locks here too. So if you turn the screw here on the side, that's going to lock the blade so it won't slide up and down. It just makes it more secure while you're cutting. Um, these blades also... Um, can be snapped off when they're worn, when they're used. So you'll see they've got lines. I undo it, you can see this a bit better. But you'll see they've got little lines through there. So what happens is bring it down. So say you, your blade's starting to get a bit worn, a bit bent. You know, it's not as sharp as it was. Um, these have, they, you can buy these blade snappers. Um, sometimes they come with them, but they're great. I mean, there must be dozens in there. I've had this for, like I said, eight, nine months, full of blades. It's a safe place to keep them. So what you do is you put your blade in there just up to where that crease line is. So you can see just where it is on that crease line there. And then, boom, oh, done. You snap it off falls into your little safe box and then you've got your slide up a little bit and you've got your fresh blade ready to go. Now, we're actually cutting these off. I know the camera's not, can't really get the camera much closer, but I'll, I'll show you as best I can. Um, another, another tip as we're going along is I use glasses which magnify a fraction but they don't really magnify a lot um, so because these things are so small these are great and you can buy these online I've even seen them flashing their ads on Facebook um, there's different quality different types and if you hang on a sec I'll just go grab the box okay so just move this aside for a second. So here we have Vision Aid is the brand, the game changer for close-up work, and it really is. Now, this is what you get. You can see that. So there's a little nose part there on the box. There they call that a nose part, nose pads, and they sit on the bit that sits over your nose just to provide a bit of comfort. So they come with straps. I mean, I'm not here to sell these or anything, but they come with either a strap or you can wear them like glasses. As you see, like this. Um, they come with... The good thing about this particular brand is they don't have batteries in them. And the problem with some of the other brands is the batteries are really quite heavy. And after a while, they can be a bit uncomfortable. 
or they start to slide down your nose because of the weight. But without the battery, instead they have a USB for the light in the front here. So definitely, um, if you can get paid a little extra for the USB version, they come, they come in both versions. That's the way to go. Also, there's all your lenses. I'm not going to open this. Because actually, what happened was they um, they accidentally sent me two. Or I ordered, accidentally ordered two, but they only charged me for one. Um, yeah. So, but the lenses come in different magnifications. There they are there. Annular cleaning cloth. And they're fantastic because when you're working with photo edge, you need all the help you can get. <laughs> um, and of course the USB light on there. Look at that. Two settings. Very, very bright. You know. You can see exactly what you're doing. Back here. So you know, while you're down there working, look at that. Great stuff. All right, so now you use one of these is what I use to take these off. Now the idea is if you want to take off, let's say, uh, we want to take this piece off here. I think we want to try that, or is there one that I could? I just want to find the one that needs bending later. Okay, we'll take off this center piece here. Now, what you want to do is you want to feel the edge of the piece you're cutting. Bring your knife onto the little tab that it's holding it there and press down. Simple like that. Again, feel along the edge, get to the tab. You'll hear a clip, little click. Other one, boom. The last one here is right on there. Boom. Now, you'll see that that's still sitting there because I've still got the plastic on the back. And sometimes when you're working these parts and you hit that last little piece, it can release it and it just flings off into the distance and, you know, you might get lucky and you'll find it and you might not. But anyway, so that's held that in place because the plastic backing's on. Now, the reason we want to get close to the metal, I'll show you that in a second, actually. So here we go. So you see, we can lift that off. And there it is. Pieces come off and put that down there. Put that aside. So there you go. You got your piece of photo wedge. Now, um, there's some tools that I'll show you here. Now, these are made by Master Tools. I find these have been fantastic. These are very um, narrow point um, here for picking up very, very tiny pieces. So they're very, they're very good and accurate. Um, these also have one that's at an angle. So you've got one that's like this. And that's help, that helps for um, facing photo etch. Sometimes there's some spots where you've got to reach inside or get certain angles or you want to come down over the top of somewhere and use that. These are very handy. Very, very handy. There's also um, pairing here that are uh, that out. They're like more of a flat nose to them. So I mean, they're all good for different reasons. Um, so they're good. And the other ones are just a, a longer pair of these ones here that I'm using. So, yeah, definitely good to have those tools. Okay. So, okay, so when you've got your photo etch like this, um, one of the first things you need to look at, we'll pick one up, I'll, I'll give you another tip. <laughs> another tip is, let me just check for a second here. One more thing I forgot to mention is there's another process called annealing. 
photo edge. And what that means is basically heating it up so that the photo edge will bend easier. It softens the metal. So, for instance, with a piece like this, this sort of is a tricky piece because at the top there's some small thin pieces, but at the bottom there's some wider, thicker pieces there. So the idea is if you use a cigarette lighter works, although not recommended because you've got to hold the heat on it. You need a bit more control. So what I would do is, let me just grab something for a second here. So I would get an old pair of tweezers and I'd use that to hold the piece and then go over to your stove and use the flame in the stove to heat it up. What you want to do is only heat it up so that it changes colour. So just give it a, a few light runs underneath in the flame and it'll go black and then there'll be sort of a blue colour. That's enough. And when you've done that, what I would do is just drop it in some water, cool it off. What happens then is you'll find the piece bends much easier and not only bends easier but it, it stays in the position you bend it so a lot of the times when you're trying to make a piece that's like circular and a cylinder and it keeps springing back because it's just the tension in the metal when it's been o'neilled it'll actually bend and hold its position which makes it a lot lot easier um, but i would not recommend you do it on small tiny pieces like for instance if you were to try and heat up that ladder there it would just crinkle up and disintegrate it's just not enough metal there um, even these because they've they're all like grated and you can see through them they're not a solid piece i wouldn't anneal that either but when you've got a solid pieces like this that you may need to have to bend into a cone or a cylinder shape and that's a perfect candidate for annealing uh, and bending like that. So definitely something to look out for is uh, is that. But again, it's, you know, you don't often come across cases where you need to do that. Um, but for making small circular pieces that you've got to bend and try and get it to stay in position, then definitely heating them up and annealing them to the point where the metal is um, liable like that. And, and you've only got to do it once and it'll, it'll stay like that. So yeah, it must just break down the composition of the metal a little bit. It makes it more flexible, particularly when you've got this thick metal that some of these sets come with. Okay, so yeah, that's annealing the metal. You'll, you'll, you'll hear of other people doing that. Um, and it has its place, definitely. Okay, so blue tack is what we have. We use blue tack here. Now, the idea of this is if you take a little piece of blue tack, roll it up, and then push it down on your little tile there in the corner. Then what you can do is, is put your photo etch in the blue tack like that. Because I can tell you that, I can't tell you the countless amount of times where I'm taking off bits of photo etch and there might be five, six, seven pieces. And then while I'm there working on the next piece, I don't realise that under my hand I might be touching where another piece of photo etch and I've pushed it off the tile and onto the mat or it's gone somewhere, or worse, it's stuck to your skin, and then you've gone taking your hand away and it's gone onto the carpet, and you don't even know it until you look back and go, oh, sure, I had six pieces there. <laughs> so, But if you do this, this is one option, is blue tack will just keep it in place. It's going to be harder to bump that and lose that or have that thing off anywhere. Another option to that and probably a bit better is I get a bit of black cardboard. You can buy these in sheets, right? Black cardboard. 
what I do, and particularly black, is I have that separate, and then I put my photo etch on it. It's out of your working area. You're not going to bump it, and it's standing out quite clear, and you can see exactly where it is. And trust me, when you've got pieces that are oh, a fraction of a millimetre in size, that's the best thing to do. Um, the blue tack is also good for holding bits in place while you're trying to glue pieces together. Um, if I had to glue, for instance, uh, say this needed uh, some pieces of photo etch positioned underneath it, the blue tack is a great way of holding it in place while you position your other pieces onto it. it just keeps it's a stable platform there and it gives you an extra hand free. Um, to do whatever else now so that's that now that's those tools um, now we come to bending so as you can see with this piece here it has a little nub on the end here that needs to be bent and you need we need to bend that up looks like we're just going to check now yes so we've got two sides have to come up and that comes over the end to make like a a long rectangular shape sort of a box is what that is now to bend these things now I've seen people using tools like this now I know there's you know Tamiya made these photo bending tools and and they're all you know that's fine but if you want to pay that much money you can or you can go to your local hardware store and get these for five dollars which to me I think are the same. The thing to remember with these is to make sure you get the ones that don't have anything in here. They've got to be flat. You don't want any um, grip inside there, otherwise you're going to damage your photo etch while you're holding it. So people will come along, I've seen, and hold that in there like that. Position it. And then there, and then bend it with their finger or or get something and, and bend it um, that's fine but and it will work that'll be that's okay but you need to be in most cases more accurate uh, plus it, this is another reason why things could flick off into into wherever holding with these um, so the alternative to that is there are special photo edge tools and one of those tools is this one which is also by master tools so this is designed for bending photo edge um, you can get certain angles out of it if you need to you can do different size pieces small pieces in here so the idea is that this thing you loosen it up and you can rotate this is the working area here so you would rotate it around so that where you want to work is on there and also around this way and that for bending pieces as well on there but for a piece like we've got here we'll probably just need that all right so what happens now is i'll move that over We'll take our piece of photo edge. Now, another thing too, this is fine picking up things with tweezers. Uh, this, this size, <laughs> there I go dropping it. Um, this size is not a problem. When you get down to smaller stuff, my next tip is these. So these are wax tipped pencils. Buy these on eBay or Amazon or wherever you want, but just search them. Um, they're just like a normal pencil. You sharpen them like a normal pencil, but they're wax tip, which means they they'll pick up small things. They're very see, look at that, and that's not going to come off. They're low tactile, so if you're placing this in a spot to be glued, all you need to do is touch it, and it'll, it'll let go. 
There's no mucking around trying to push it off. These are these. <laughs> I would be lost without these. These pencils are the best. So let's move our piece over. Put it here. Now, what I do now is your next tool to use would be uh, a razor blade. Now, these Master Cook Tools kits, they come with these plastic ones here for sliding underneath your piece of photo etch and bending them up. So when you put the piece in, so say we're going to put that in here, and we'll slide it up to where it's got to go up to the edge, tighten it down, and that's ready to bend. Now these are fine. Problem is they're not quite as thin that's what a razor blade is. Razor blade, 100% better. And all you do is slide your razor blade under there. Just get straight under there, bend it up, and you're done. Loosen it. And then bring it back out, and there's your bent little piece of photo edge. Now, now we're going to build, bend up the other two sides. So what we can do is you'll find sometimes that they're not that that may not fit. Okay, so what we'll do with this one is we can bend it up one way. Let's bend this way. Turn it around. Get that in there. It is it's tightened up under there. Boom. That's how simple it is, you know. Then get to make sure that's up and straight. And then you would simply turn it around and do the other side. Now sometimes you get some complement some complicated bends where some have to be bent up, some have to bend the opposite way, and you've got to really think about the finished product and what you're trying to achieve because you can make it really difficult for yourself if you've bent one piece in a certain direction and realize oh now I can't turn it up the other way and bend it the bend the other piece. So you do what you can with this tool but then there's another tool here which is this. I'll bring back our tile back down. So this has all different sizes in here. You got you can measure it's got, uh, centimeters, millimeters there. Uh, different shapes if you want to do curves, um, you can use these pieces. Um, you can either use either side of this. So the good thing with this is that you can get these will slide in. So that will slide inside there and hold that down. And then you'll just come in and slide it under. Make sure it's held down properly. And bend it up. And there you go. So simple as that. You've got your little rectangular box uh, done. Now, a thing to remember is that, you know, to, to have this fine detail that you have like that for instance look at that see it's the detail on that you know um, you want those ends to fold up and match perfectly and sometimes that's hard to do if when you cut it off the sprue off your metal sprue here you, you've got a little bit of metal on that edge so what you find you need to do and usually this is before you bend it, is you'll need to file that off. Otherwise, when I fold up uh, the end of that box, if it's got a fit flush against an edge of the other side and there's a nub there from the metal that came off, it's not going to sit up against it flush. So what you need to do is either use one of these, which is, you know, women use for their fingernails. Just do fingernails. Well, 
if it's only a small bit of, I mean, you can use, you just mostly use this on plastic, but it will work. The, even on the edge of this photo etch sheet here, there's a little nub just there. And all you do is just do a quick pass across like that. It's gone, it's smooth. So you know now that even when gluing it down into position, it's got a perfectly flat surface. It's going to sit down flat on the onto where it's got to go, and it'll it'll be much better secure um, uh, area to be attached. Now, if you have pieces that are got a little bit more metal, then you could use files. Um, you get the little kits like this again, the hardware store, don't cost anywhere, anything much. Um, just a little flat file like that, and again, you come up and you know, there, there's another bit there, and just go like this, just a few little swipes across, and it'll just take that off, and it's gone. Okay, um, thing to remember when you're filing whether it's with the metal one or the other is be very careful because it can catch on that metal and bend your piece so always work lengthwise never go this way look at that you're bending everything don't file that way always file that way and just use the weight of the file don't even put any pressure just use the weight of the file you know, and do it slowly. Um, this isn't going to bend, but some really tiny, small pieces, uh, which you wouldn't use a file like this, it'd be a bit too hard for it. But using this, it's just take your time and, and do it slowly. And, and you'll find that, you know, doing a cross like that is putting stress. It's, it's likely to bend the piece. So, yeah, files to get those edges nice flat painting um, there is you can prime it depends so for example if I was going to use this sheet um, I would probably spray airbrush primer while it's on the sheet like that both sides of it give it a nice coat and let that dry and then I would wait when that's dry and do the base coat, the grey or whatever it's going to be. And then I would come back later and do an extra coat of grey. Um, just to make that coat, that base coat thicker because when you're handling this and, and, and positioning it, positioning it on wherever it's got to be attached, you're using metal tweezers and it's going to take the paint off so if you've got a good undercoat primer and two coats of your base coat on here less chance of that happening um, I would try to avoid priming and painting stuff that needs to, that needs to be bent uh, a lot of cases you can paint things after they've been glued onto your model that's that's no problem um, but if it's something that needs to be painted a different color uh, than what it's going to be attached to it's best to paint it away off on here or in the case of these this piece here if you wanted to paint that this is where your blue tack comes in handy is you just stand that there like that and there's something that'll hold it still while you airbrush give it a quick paint now the I, you can use whatever you want to as a primer but I find that Steinal Res is a really nice thick primer um, for photo etch and plastic but this stuff's really good this is white and I also have black but um, yeah, this is good. This dries on there and it's nice and thick. Uh, there's also a new product here this is by SMS. This is an Australian company that do specific etch primer. 
Now I've used this too, and it's just a clear etch primer. You just spray it over. You can also spray this on your plastic as well. Um, but again, that provides a nice layer of primer for the paint to stick to. The thing with that is that the primer itself is not coloured. So at least, you know, if, you, if you're using a grey primer, I'm using a white there, but if you've got a grey primer and then you're spraying it grey as your base colour, well then you know that if you're going to scratch it, you've got two coats to get through, whereas if this is your base coat, as soon as that shows up through, well, it's clear. It's going to show your brass. But anyway, but that is good stuff. I've had no problem with that. It's really good. Okay, so that's painting it. Um, let's have a look. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to bring up and mention is glue. Now, the best thing for, well, number one, don't use this sort of stuff. Don't use this. This is Mr. Cement, but there's all the other types of this. These aren't for metal is fine for plastic because that's what this does it melts and welds plastic this won't work on photo etch uh, so what I do is I use CA glue super glue and for me my choice is Loctite and this precision one I don't know where you can get it if you can but they have different type there's precision control and gel I think I have a yeah there's a control gel one uh, and then there's a control that's not gel so basically what that means is this is a thick one this comes out like a paste um, so it's only good for certain things if you want yeah. Whereas this precision one, it's it's like the consistency of water, um, very very thin and um, easier to apply. That's my choice is that one. Now there's another one here I use, is this one. So this one here is made by Mig, and this is called Ultra Glue. And it's for photo etch and clear parts. Now, it dries clear. In fact, this dries, the clear that it dries is better than the clear of CA glue because this tends to have a bit of a shine to it. Even after it's dry, you can see a shiny bit of where it was. This invisible, completely invisibly clear. And another good advantage of this, it's really thick paste in here, but you water it down. So what I do is I take a bit out, I put it in a container like this, I drop it in here, I've got a few little toothpicks in here, and I just put some water in there. And that and then I just apply that where I need it. Um, great stuff. And it, like I said, it dries completely clear and it doesn't dry straight away like super glue. So with this stuff, you've probably got about 15 minutes, 10 minutes to maneuver your piece. And, and because it's the consistency you want, you can have it runny like water or you can have it thick. If you want your photo itch to stand up like the railing, then put it on a little bit thicker and then get the railing to stand up in, as you position it. You've got plenty of time to position it using this stuff. Not like the instant the A glue, as soon as it touches, it's set. Uh, another problem with CA glue, particularly you find when you're using photo etch and putting it on, is that this is a, oh, how do you say it? Um, it's first time you use it. That's, just, that's it, that's your only chance. Okay, so what I'm saying is if if I need to glue this piece and I'm in you so I've touched the super glue into my spot where I'm putting where I want this to, to go. 
you know, say I want to glue it to here. I put I put a touch of super glue there, and then I put that in position, and it's all good. And then I turn around, I look and go, oh, hang on, the angle's not right. And I go, oh, well, so no, you take it off, and you think, oh, no, I'll try that again. Now, what happens is your glue's just dried up on that spot where you put that. If you take another bit of glue and put it on that spot again, on top of the glue that you've already put there, super glue does not stick to super glue. Okay? So what you're going to find is that you're going to be putting that down onto the fresh bit of super glue, and that super glue is just not going to want to set. And it's going to be really awkward, if not impossible, to get that piece to stay where you want it to. That's why you'll find, and you'll see this, that the first time you touch with super glue, that's where it's going to stay. Whereas if you're using this, you've got time to manipulate and move it around and it will dry completely clear and there'll be no sign that there's anything, any glue around it at all. Um, but particularly good for if you need to add something to a surface that's already painted. Um, this tends to eat into the paint, whereas this won't. And this will let you stick your photo etch onto a painted surface. You'll have no problem. Okay, so now another tip um, I would have is um, particularly building ships is you build whole structures of photo etch you know you might build a whole AA gun with 15 pieces of photo etch on it or you might build you know your superstructure that's got all the railings around it and everything like that and a lot of these kits they get you to build these pieces and add all your photo etch and then move on to another piece what I would suggest to protect your work and and photo etch because these things are delicate is you can go buy these containers from the cheap you know discount stores you can get like 10 of these for two dollars paper towel in the bottom of them and I reuse these all the time and then when you've got your piece photo of superstructure or whatever it is you've got built Put it in that, it's going to be safe in there, put the lid on it and um, maybe mark what step of the instructions that piece is for and put it away and pile them up until you need to get to them when you start using those pieces because you need somewhere safe like that. Um, another little idea are these little cups. So these little, like they use like soya sauce containers um, with lids again great place to put your photo edge pieces in there you know you can put um, some padding something in the bottom there to keep it padded and then drop your lid on there and again right on the top of that you know step whatever or part whatever of your instructions and there's that piece it just makes the whole process easier and less risk of damaging um, your photo edge parts. Another thing um, with applying uh, glue to parts is sometimes you need a really, really small amount of glue. Um, there might be some minute little piece that needs to be glued. So what I've, what I do is I have a, a pen that I've just taken the ink nib out and then I've got a, a pin and super glued that into there and then I just use the tip of the pin as my glue applicator. So I will use post-it pads, these little notepads and I'll put my dab of glue you know, just a touch of glue there, and then I'll use my little piece here to go touch where I want to put the glue, attach my photo etch part. This will allow you to put in a really tiny, small amount of glue. And then what you find too is that, um, well, for instance, these, when you fill up a page, what the good thing about these is they don't leak through. You do is tear off a piece, 
throw that away you're on a fresh piece and you just work through and you you can do quite a get quite a lot of use out of each page of that um, but for this too um, another uh, tip is the glue tends to build up on the end of these and they're not as fine anymore you get this sort of a bubble of glue build up like there is a slight one on that I've cleaned it recently but you can see there's a might be able to show you it's just a bit of a build up on the end so lighter over there go like this there you go glue's gone give the end of it a bit of a white paper paper towel well oh, you're good to go it's quite brand new again i've built every model with this single little tool to apply the glue now you can buy these other little glue applicators in, in sets i've seen those i haven't used them um i'm sure they work too although i don't know how they well i guess they must burn them burn the glue off too when you finish with them um, but this does the job for that little smoke small photo itch for me uh, doing that all right i think i've just about covered everything that i can think of um if you've got some questions put them in the comments below um if you've got your own tips and tri tricks um regarding photo etch put it in the comments below and share it with others and with me too you know i'm all open to new ideas and you know all the time i'm always coming across oh this guy's done this and that's a great idea and you know that's how community works with um uh, sharing our information and our ideas uh, but like i say i've only been doing this for about nine months so this is what i've picked up in that time and um, hopefully you'll all get something out of it and uh yeah definitely comment below um give, give us a thumbs up if you like the video and subscribe i've got a, a couple other tips and tricks titles out and there'll be more to come and of course the major um, model build videos uh coming along as well so yeah as this is great i look forward to hearing from your comments and um and have you following along in future videos Okay, bye for now, thanks.